from kindergartners. Can you guys help me read today's message? Ready? Here we go. Good morning. Today is Thursday. We have PE today. Let's have a great day. So today's your day with um, Mr. Sprague, so he will be posting something on our agenda, something fun for you to do today to get your bodies moving. We also have a couple other fun activities planned. We're going to ask that you practice retelling a story. So find somebody at your house that could read you maybe one of your favorite books and practice telling the story again. Remember, we start at the beginning and we talk about what happens next in the middle and then we talk about how the story ends and we try to remember as many details as we can. Teachers are also gonna ask you to draw a picture of something you ate today. So it could be your breakfast, it could be your lunch or your dinner. So remember we practice drawing with details and then we're gonna ask you to label. So remember when you're labeling something, you have to say the word really slowly and you pretend you have a rubber band. You say the word slowly so that you can hear all the sounds in the word. So have somebody take a picture of your, of your drawing with your labels and send it to me. I would love to see what you're working on. We're also going to ask you to practice chopping. So remember, you sharpen your choppers and you hold them up and you chop each sound that you hear. So if you were chopping the name Sam, you would go Sam-y and each sound in Sam's name gets a chop. We're also gonna have you practice figuring out and solving um, story problems for math. There's a really fun science activity, and if your parents could help you set up Lexia at home, you could even have some time with Lexia. And of course, don't forget to play inside and outside for some fresh air. I have a book that I would love to read, and I know I've read it to you before, but I ha also have it at home, Harold and the Purple Crayon. And this is about a boy named Harold who has a really, really great imagination, even though all he has in his hand is a purple crayon. Let's see his adventure that he takes. One evening, after thinking it over for some time, Harold decided to go for a walk in the moonlight. There wasn't any moon, and Harold needed a moon for a walk in the moonlight, and he needed something to walk on. He made a long straight path so he wouldn't get lost, and he set off on his walk, taking his big purple crayon with him. But he didn't seem to be getting anywhere on the long straight path, so he left the path for a shortcut across a field, and the moon went with him. That shortcut led right to where Harold thought a forest ought to be. He didn't want to get lost in the woods, so he made a very small forest with just one tree in it. It turned out to be an apple tree. The apples would be very tasty, Harold thought, when they got ripe. So he put a frightening dragon under the tree to guard the apples. It was a terribly frightening dragon. It even frightened Harold. He backed away. His hand holding the purple crayon shook. Suddenly he realized what was happening, but by then Harold was over his head in an ocean. He came up thinking fast, and in no time he was climbing aboard a trim little boat. He quickly set sail, and the moon sailed along with him. After he had sailed long enough, Harold made land without much trouble. He stepped ashore on the beach, wondering where he was. The sandy beach reminded Harold of picnics, and the thought of picnics made him hungry. So he laid out a, a nice, simple picnic lunch. There was nothing but pie, but there were all nine kinds of pie that Harold liked best. When Harold finished his picnic, there was quite a lot left. He hated to see so much delicious pie go to waste. So Harold left a very hungry moose and a deserving porcupine to finish it up. And off he went looking for a hill to climb to see where he was. Harold knew that the higher up he went, the farther he could see, so he decided to make the hill into a mountain. If he went high enough, he thought, he could see the window of his bedroom. He was tired and he felt he had to be getting to bed. 
He hoped he could see his bedroom window from the top of the mountain. But as he looked down over the other side, he slipped, and there wasn't any other side of the mountain. He was falling in thin air. But luckily, he kept his wits in his purple crayon. He made a balloon, and he grabbed onto it, and he made a basket under the balloon big enough to stand it. He had a fine view from the balloon, but he couldn't see his window. He couldn't even see a house. So he made a house with windows, and he landed the balloon on the grass in the front yard. None of the windows was his window. He tried to think where his window ought to be. He made some more windows. He made a big building full of windows. He made lots of buildings full of windows. He made a whole city full of windows, but none of the windows was his window. He couldn't think where it might be. He decided to ask a policeman. The policeman pointed the way Harold was going anyway, but Harold thanked him. And he walked along with the moon, wishing he was in his room and in bed. Then suddenly Harold remembered. He remembered where his bedroom window was when there was a moon. It was always right around the moon. And then Harold made his bed. He got in it and he drew up the covers. The purple crayon dropped on the floor and Harold dreamed of his best friend. Boys and girls, thank you so much for watching this and I hope you have an awesome day. I will see you tomorrow.